This woman is stealing something. She walks into the mall and picks up all kinds of expensive cosmetics without even batting an eye. Then she walks up to the counter and says she wants to return it. The attendant asks her to produce the invoice. She said she didn't have an invoice but the items were unopened and unused. The attendant asked her to provide her credit card information again. But Dappy still said no. The attendant told her to go to the customer service department to return the product. So Dappy got angry and said she would keep the items instead of returning them. Finally, she asked the attendant for a bag, because the only way she could successfully bring the stolen goods was to put them in a bag. She was able to successfully get the stolen items out of them all. A few minutes later, Debbie shows up at a five-star hotel. There's a couple checking out at the front desk. He says they have a flight to catch so they're checking out of their room. Debbie is upstairs listening in silence. When the couple left, she called the front desk. Debbie calls out the waiter's name and says she's the wife of the man who just checked out. She was delayed and needed another room for another night. She also ordered the cleaning lady to clean up. She picks up someone else's luggage while waiting for the elevator. Debbie enters the room without swiping her card while the cleaning lady is cleaning. She's very good at this kind of thing. Debbie was just released from prison and she had a plan. She was going to steal a $150 million diamond necklace. To do this, she approached her friend Lou and asked for 7 people and $20, 000 to go on the job. Debbie found a jeweler she'd worked with before. She could make 7 pieces of jewelry from cut diamonds in less than an hour. Then they find a girl who does acrobatics on the street. Lou said it was the fastest pickpocket she'd ever seen. Debbie was a little disappointed to see her acrobatics. But in the end, the girl easily stole the watch from the passerby. The fifth participant was a hacker who could hack into any local network. The sixth participant is Debbie's former smuggling buddy. On the surface, she was a virtuous housewife. In fact, she had a warehouse full of smuggled goods. In the end, they found a designer who owed $5 million. This year's museum gala features an actress as the host. So far, the actress, look and the designer have yet to be determined. Debbie had to get the actress to wear the necklace if she wanted to steal the diamonds. She met with the actress' enemies for the designer and broke the fake news that the designer was about to design her dress. When the actress reads this, she gets angry and contacts the designer. She was determined to get the designer away from her enemies. When she spoke passionately, the designer was distracted and always looked out of the window. Now the actress wants to hire the designer. The smuggler gets a 3D printer and a pair of scanning glasses. Once everything was ready, the designer lent the necklace in the actress' name. The diamond necklace was worth hundreds of millions of dollars and had been sealed in the ground for 50 years. Debbie puts on the special glasses to scan the necklace and doesn't stop looking at it. The staff was confused and tried to tell her to stop. Debbie didn't care. Several women Saturday in front of the computer, staring at the images coming through her glasses. Just as the staff gets impatient at this vial. As the skim was completed, Debbie made a replica of that necklace using the white stone. Anyone who wasn't a professional wouldn't be able to tell it was a fake necklace. The designer gave the actress a full description of how beautiful the necklace would look on her. The actress was thrilled to hear that. At the same time, the hacker had hacked into the museum's security system and stole the museum's surveillance plan. She repositioned the surveillance so that the entrance to the women's restroom was a blind spot. Debbie pretended to be a visitor to the museum to explore how big the blind spot was. The smuggler was hired to work for the company preparing the party and got a seating chart and a guest list for the party. Debbie realized that the actress date was her ex-boyfriend. They had committed theft together five years earlier. He was selling paintings, so Debbie disguised herself as a buyer and bid up the price. One day, her boyfriend brought a document for her to sign. This time, she played the role of the seller, but this time they were caught by the police. Debbie didn't betray her boyfriend to the police. Instead, her boyfriend used the document to betray Debbie and send Debbie to jail himself. So Debbie saw the list and had an even bolder idea. Their theft plan moves forward step by step. Hello, with the help of the smugglers, also entered the company and stayed in the back room as a nutritionist. With only one day left before the party, the diamond necklace was finally shipped out. The designer asked the actress to put the necklace on to see how it looked. It was only when she took it off that she discovered a problem. 
The security staff said, it was impossible to take off the necklace this way. The necklace needed a special magnet to be taken off. The designer was dumbfounded. She had an idea and said she was curious and asked him to show her how to take off the necklace again and filmed the process. The hacker received the video and asked her sister, who was a lock-picking genius, to make them a circle with positive and negative poles. Now the theft plan has been set up on the day of the party. The actress made a spectacular appearance wearing a diamond necklace. Her smile showed her beauty. Once she was seated, Debbie and the others began their operation. Lou added a little something to the starlet's plate. The actress was served and ate without a care in the world. She was so hungry, she hadn't even eaten in three days for the party. Soon the drug took effect. The actress rushed straight into the toilet. After she went in, Debbie stopped the bouncers at the door and alerted them that this was the ladies' room. As oh, only the actress and the pickpocket dressed as a waiter were left in the bathroom. The pickpocket comforted her and took off the necklace and stuffed it in his pocket. At this moment, the smuggler instructs the waiter to take the tray back to the kitchen. As the waiter walks past the restroom, the pickpocket placed the necklace on the plate and took it back to the kitchen. The diamond necklace, worth $150 million, is pulled from the sink. The dishwasher rinsed the necklace with water and then pocketed it. She rushed into the mother and baby room. This is her workstation at the moment. The jeweler places the necklace on the counter. She opened the cabinet and took out the tools. She had put there to start dismantling the necklace. Meanwhile, the actress comes out of the bathroom. There was no jewelry around her neck. The bodyguards were stunned at first glance. Finally, the organizers closed the venue and searched it one by one. Everyone stood at the door and had to be scanned before they could leave. The jeweler was still in the mother's room, concentrating on unwrapping the necklace. At that moment, someone came into the back room. The hacker saw it and rushed to inform the jeweler that someone was coming in. Let's give it a few more minutes. We don't have a few minutes. The smuggler walks over to the fountain and throws the fake necklace she hid in the water. Then she shouted that she had found the necklace. The jeweler is finally safe. When the real necklace was almost finished being split, the pickpocket came in and took the diamonds and gave the diamonds to every woman involved in the scheme. The party was coming to an end. Several of the women thieves changed into their gowns and left. No one noticed that there were more guests and the fake necklace wasn't discovered until it was returned to the bank. The staff called in an insurance investigator. The investigator watched the surveillance and then questioned everyone involved. When he got to the actress, he took out a few photos for the actress to identify. One of the photos was of Debbie. The actress looked at the photo and thought about it. Seven women were drinking and celebrating, but suddenly... You guys are fucked. Everyone frowned, except Debbie, because she was the one who brought the actress into the theft team. The designer's purpose was too obvious when she took the photo of the necklace with her phone, and the performance was too flashy. The actress had already figured out what they were planning. The actress told them that the insurance investigator was looking into the theft of the necklace. The man was also an old acquaintance of Debbie's. She also saw this coming and had already found a scapegoat. First, the women disguised themselves and sold off the broken diamonds. And then Debbie approached the investigator and offered to cooperate. She would give the investigator a lead. Meanwhile, the actress knocks on Debbie's ex-boyfriend's door and says she wants to play games with him. She ties him to the bed. He's confused and thinks she's having fun. Next moment, the actress bursts into the checkroom and finds the diamonds and the man's clothes from the party. This was put in Debbie's pocket when she bumped into him at the party. She quickly takes a picture and sends it to Debbie and the investigators. The next day, when the man wakes up, the police are waiting downstairs. He denies everything. Instead, the police tell him that four women have recently wired large amounts of money into his account. The man is desperate. The female thieves celebrate with drinks and wish the man would spend the rest of his life in jail. The actress asks questions about how to get everyone to share in the $16 million. Debbie laughed. Thought we were just gonna steal one necklace? What do you think we are, a bunch of pussies? It turns out they were ready to make more money. They used a 3D printer to replicate the jewelry in the showroom. Then they approached an old friend for help. When the diamond necklace was lost and everyone was gathered at the door, their friend entered the showroom and, with Lou's cooperation, exchanged all the jewelry. Debbie was outside the showroom, communicating with security until the jewels were stolen. The staff came in and just took a look at the jewels. They couldn't tell if the jewelry was real or not and left. The jewels stolen by the female thieves today 
could earn each of them $38. 3 million. This is the end of the story. The movie Oceans 8 was released in 2018. Eight beautiful women each succeed in their perfectual theft plan. Their beauty and skills are a joy to watch. Did you fall in love with these eight queens after watching it? You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.